wouldn't consider running for mayor. No, I mean, I, I, right now, I really am not looking at anything else. People okay. have approached me about many different things, and, and I'm very, you know, humbled by that. It really, but I'm concerned, as you were just alluding to before, about the fact that Latinos seem to be very, you know, absent in the larger conversations, and, and that, that has that to change? change. Well, there have been some of us, just to be honest, you know, there have been some of us uh, that are looking at having an internal conversation as elected officials within the community about where is the state of our leadership and where are we heading. And I think that that conversation needs to happen because we need to be able to actively engage and push forward individuals and encourage individuals to run um, that can, that can um, be candidates for these positions in the future. It continues to be really... Um, uh, really sad that that's the, the reality we have right now. We just saw the convention and the nominations, and there's articles in the paper today about all white slates. You know, that, that really, uh, considering the diversity of the city, really continues to be a worry. It's great to see that in our local municipal level and our legislative body that we do now have a majority people of color in the, in the council, and that's really, um, really a reflection, I think, of where things are heading. And uh, speaking in, in, in those terms, uh, you're talking about the leadership. Where does the leadership lie and stay? Uh, would you agree that there seems to be a passing of the baton going on, that the established Latino leadership, much of which is Puerto Ricanio, uh, that that kind of citywide, statewide candidacy leadership is not going to come from that group, that it's going to have to come, if it's going to come at all, anytime soon, from this younger group of people that includes yourself and others? Well, I mean, I think, you know, there, there have been many that have paved the path for us, and we've got to recognize those mm -hmm. contributions, and it really has helped us achieve, you know, uh, the, the achievements that we've made. Um, but, I, yes, I think that that's obviously genuinely the case. I'm, I'm a strong believer of leadership development. Mm -hmm. I, I do that in, in my position now, having a youth council in my office. I have young people in my office that I'm mentoring. I believe very strongly that that's something that we've missed on a consistent basis within our community, that the leadership development has not happened in a consistent way and in the way that Dr. Antonia Pantoja had originally mm -hmm. envisioned. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's, that's something that we, it's a challenge now to us to be able to really look at that and to say, where have we gone wrong and how do we ensure that we kind of just fill that vacuum because there's a vacuum right now um, that we really kind of have people encouraged and um, to, to step up to the plate because they have the support and they have the, the ability to do so. And so we, I, I believe that that charge is now on our shoulders and, and I take responsibility for that as I know some others that I've talked to feel the same way and, and we want to make some uh, headway in that direction. And uh, speaking of the existing slates, where you have Andrew Cuomo, mm -hmm. and apparently there won't be any Democrat that's running against him. Mm -hmm. uh, a controller, I'm not clear who might be running against the Napoli uh, uh, Attorney General slate. Uh, how do you see these races? Uh, what's, what's your, uh, how do you handicap what's going on and see, uh, what, what do you see from the existing uh, people that will be filling these positions likely by next year? Well, I mean, I've already, in one of those races I've already endorsed. In the attorney general race, I've already endorsed, you know, Senator Schneiderman, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there has to be a real discussion with all the candidates about what is your commitment, you know, to working with our community and the concerns that our community has. And I want to see what the response is. I want to see how they run their campaigns. What are the issues discussed? You know, do you have a real understanding of what it is to partner um, with the Latino community in, in New York City? Or what, do, what does that mean to you? What are the issues that you would uh, propose? I, that, that's my interest in really, um, in who I support, is to see that there is a genuine commitment to that, but also that there's been a trajectory in that direction as well. Um, so that's the challenge that I think, you know, I would pose to all of us in the Latino community, the leadership, is to really uh, put them in the hot seat. Uh, we did that when Senator Gillibrand was appointed by our governor, and that, yes. we were very successful in that. And um, we can have, you know, true partnership. I believe, you know, uh, that there have been many that have ex that um, that have really been supportive of, of our issues, and I will continue to support them because they've demonstrated that commitment. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's a lot of, of still at the national level, a lot of to 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 have, be desired, so to speak. You know, uh, immigration reform is critical to me. It's important to this city. I feel very passionately about it, and 
and the fact that we haven't made headway in that, despite the promises that were made to our community, is very disappointing. But um, there's a lot of work that we have to do. Can you, at the council, put a stop to this uh, stop and frisk program of the mayors and, and Commissioner Kelly? I mean, there and has. Would you, to, and would you, if you could? I would want to really pay. I mean, we have to pay great attention to this and really figure out what we can do to really lessen that. I mean, it's outrageous the numbers that we're talking about of people stopped and frisked, and the number of people that percentage of that that actually are guilty of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably 85 percent are not guilty of anything. Mm -hmm. um, so Only six percent are arrested. Right. The stigmatization that that brings with it. So there's obviously some real serious uh, issues that have to be looked at. There was a commission report uh, that just came out to day in light of the Officer Edwards incident, African-American mm -hmm. uh, rookie uh, officer who was killed in my district, and he was off duty, uh, but it was by friendly fire. It was by other cops. And so the, the task force that was set up was to look at in friendly police, you know, friendly fire kind of shootings, um, what, is, what is it looking like? And they came out with the finding that there was, it may not be overt, but that there is underlying prejudices that basically inform or that um, direct or, or uh, affect people in terms of their perceptions. And so that just came out today, actually. Um, and so that's of concern. So we have to, I, I, it's not an easy answer. Okay. There's underlying issues here that have to be looked at. Mm -hmm.